All right, folks, we back at it. Sean Walker show is doing us on game day, which is a rare new thank you for doing that for us. Talking about Allen basketball coming off a big win on Monday night against the Valley State. I'll tell you we'll discuss that as well. Brother Sean, man, how you doing, brother? I'm doing pretty good, man. It's a uh, tough stretch of the year right now, and it's cold and uh, rainy. And uh, but you know, we're here, we 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 hard hat in this thing, and um uh, uh, very happy to be here. Now, Sean, I do want to highlight Bill Gates for one, one, one reason. Uh, George Edmond scoring 25 points. I know it was the results you wanted, but talk about that young man's performance over there across the street at Benedict, man. Yeah, so so the Benedict game was a tough game because we we didn't show up uh, in the first half. Down 24 in the first half, and I almost – I think the emotions of what 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 is expected to be a rivalry really affected our, our, my, my players. Uh, we couldn't catch the ball. We couldn't stand up. We lost two shoes. To start the game, gave up four points, um, and, and and really really struggled in that first half. Got down twenty four, but Jordan Jordan Emmons was a beacon of light for sure. Um, <clears throat> he had 25, 25 points, and he played he played unbothered. He played aggressive. Um, uh, he made some mistakes out there on the floor, obviously, but um, I mean, what a performance by 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 a young guy that's getting got his first taste of that that experience over there in that environment, and. Um, I'm you know, looking forward to seeing how he, he continues to develop. He's got a ways to go in terms of his development, but uh, his effort level is never to be questioned. Um, you know, he plays, he's, he plays. You know what, and boss man, uh, Jordan should have had 35 or 40 points that game um, because he missed, <coughs> excuse me, he missed at least three layups. Um, one, one really timely one that he missed uncontested that we would have cut the lead to nine and, he misses and they go down the floor, hit a three. Um, so you know, we're excited about what he's doing. He's 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 gotten better and better and better and better as the season's going forward. And um, you know, he's he's definitely a beacon of light for us uh, against Benedict and, and we'll be moving forward. And you know, Monday night, brother Sean, uh Savannah State, man, as a low scoring old school basketball game. And uh I know you highly love you love defense and holding a team to twenty seven percent field goal percentage and seven percent from three. Hats make you happy on how much you love to see the floor. Yeah, so our, 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 our team's got to be a grinded out team. You know, this is where this is where I say to my team, numbers numbers sometimes don't tell you. When you say you held a team to 27% shooting for the game and 7% from the three-point line and held them to 47 points, you would think that you would have won the game by 20-plus points, all mm -hmm. right? And uh, we we held them to 27% shooting in the first half. We shot 44% from the field, and we were down one. So, you know, we, we, we did not play well against Savannah. <clears throat> Obviously, Savannah had a lot to do with that. Um, we fouled them excessively. They made 22 free throws of the 47 points, all right? Mm -hmm. um, the game had a funky, a funky rhythm to it because – there was so much fouling going on, maybe on both sides of the ball. <clears throat> and then we don't rebound the ball. Um, you know, I, I think we talked about early, earlier in the in the in the year as we talked during these shows about our inefficiency to be able to finish the possession. So you think about teams getting two and three and four rebounds against us, and that then that ended up in two free throws. All right, that's devastating. Um, and then we didn't play smart enough on, on offense. We came down the floor and threw two alley oops up four. Uh, th throw an alley you go down the floor and turn the ball over. They come down the floor and score and go down. Um, so it was really a back and forth game. We were we were fortunate to win, and I imagine that uh, Savannah State's pretty sick about losing as well. So we'll see them again next next week. It should be another interesting game. Yeah, man, Sean. Yeah, I was concerned about that. I, I said, hey, twenty two of the points came from the line. Like you said, the excessive foul. And so I know it's something we're gonna discuss in the film session today and. Practices going forward, like, hey, we cannot foul. We have to not foul when we defend. Just be solid and keep them in front of you. Live with the result. Let's not give them free throws when yeah. we know that they're not scoring the ball very well. Don't help them score the ball. Yeah, when we throw the ball away, we had 20 turnovers in that game, which is, I mean, this that's 20 turnovers. That's a possible 60 points, okay? <clears throat> and we do it in all different – Characteristics: We fouled screening. We we fouled posting up. Uh, we fouled 
uh, I'm sorry, we, we turned the ball over screening. We turned the ball over um, coming off screens. We push off trying to catch the ball. We throw the ball out of bounds. We make we just figure out a way to, 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 to give Savannah State back the ball. Um, we've got to deal with that, man, and we've got to we've got to deal with this rebound. Those are little things. Those are special situations. In football, you know, you got offense, defense, special teams. So when the basketball goes up, you finish, you're almost finished with defense. That's a special situation to be able to come up with the ball to convert. We're not good. We're not, we're not good at that. All right. Uh, we're 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 helping and our defense is is aggressive and but we're moving behind the ball a step, which causes you on aggressive teams to foul. Um, but but we foul, you know, when when the, when it doesn't even matter. The ball's on the other side of the floor. We over here fouling, you know. So um, something we've talked about, and we'll have to get much better at that tonight to beat a beat a, a aggressive, feisty, you know, Edward Waters team. No doubt. You know, Sean, what's good is that late, late game, you got that late game layup needed, you know execution in that regard they found that resolve to get that last bucket for you man and 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 have you as much as we talked about this year are you seeing the improvement in the leg of execution are you seeing them holding their water more so than than they early in the year because i feel like that these games are giving that callous for a degree but are you seeing that as you watch the film at the guys are in that moment being more calm very connected as these games get tighter well, if you go back and take a look at our, all of our games, every one of our games is, is is super tight, all right? We have more experience in playing one-possession games than anybody in this league. Um, and, and let's think about a week ago, we were up on Albany State, 24, 24 points with under 10 minutes on the clock, and with 20 seconds on the clock, they took the ball out of bounds to possibly go up, all right? Um, we end up winning the game by five. <clears throat> the game wasn't even close all the way through. You know, um, I keep coming back to Tuskegee up 11 with with under two minutes on the clock almost and losing their overtime. Um, we've won a bunch of one possession games. It's a testament to um, to to, our, to my young people. Um, but we what we've got to do is we can clean some things up throughout the course of the game. So the game doesn't have to come down to a one possession game. Um, we are seeing some growth. Um, you know, we had the ball. At the last in the last 15 or 16 seconds um, to win that game, but we were able to get a stop um, under 20 seconds to get the ball and finish the game. So, um, you know, defensively, I think we're in the top two or three in the league in in, in defensive efficiency. Teams are shooting under 40 percent. Shoot, we we lost to Benedict by 19 the other night. They shot 39 percent from the field. Um, so your defense, our defense is good enough to 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 win um, and to be a championship level team. You need to be in the top three in defense and the top three in offense. So we got a ways to go. We haven't connect those dots yet. No doubt, Sean. You know what, man? Like like you said, man, at least defense can travel for you. Offensively, trying try to get these young men to know what's the right shot and what's their shot and not trying to live outside of what you are. I think okay. that's something that these young men on all levels of college basketball have to understand. What is your strength? What yeah. is my weakness? Let me live with them, my strengths, not hurt the team with my weakness because my ego wants me to do something else that I'm not able to do it. And I think as we go, as you keep coaching these young men, they'll realize, hey, if we do play to my strengths, what Coach Mark wants me to do, we will be in here winning more games. Yeah, so that's a stretch for us. Uh, I mean, you, you, you said a mouthful there. You know, a lot of times in, we're in an era that when you suggest to young people that, this is your strength and this is your weakness and stay away from your weakness. They take offense to the fact that you said they had a weakness. All right. And now opposed to them playing in their strength, they spend all their time trying to prove you wrong about their weakness. And so now there's a tug of war that, that the coach is going to win. <laughs> you know what I mean? The coach is going to win because, you know, ultimately not only are we doing what's in the best interest of the young person, that individual, we need to do what's in the best interest of our team. And so, we find that to be a problem for us a lot um, where guys will, 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 will step out of character just a little bit and we have to bring them back in. But shot discipline is so important. And shot discipline is a direct correlation to transition defense. So if I shoot the ball out of balance, I can't get back. If I shoot the ball out of the connectivity of the group, then 
my right hand doesn't know what my left hand is doing, I can't get back on defense. It puts me, it puts us on our heels. So we do have some issues with that, and we're working through that even this late in the year. It's going to be February 1 tomorrow. Um, we'll After tomorrow, whatever happens tonight, we're going to have eight games left, all right, and, um, and, and, and a tournament. So we need to fix those things now. There's no – my team should not be developing – much more, we should be hitting on all strides at this point, and it's going to come down to the fact that for, for us, everybody knowing what your job is, knowing what your role is, being a superstar in your role, and we we, we could be a dangerous team. And Sean, I remember Nick Miller called those <clears> things <throat> shot turnovers. You can take a bad shot and put us in transition, he just called it a shot turnover. We need to avoid those things. You know, right. you put us already in cross match, he called it Cost match conflict. Right. And like it's those are killers. And I think when young men realize that bad shots are pretty much like turnovers as well, that'll make them, you know, more so lock in. David Miller would, char- would chart them a turnover. Right. It wasn't that one specially wouldn't be he would chart them a turnover if you take a bad shot with right. on, on transition on, on in that in that scenario. So I feel like once young men see realize that, man, I think that will help. Cause <laughs> they shot this one. <laughs> his shock policy is shock maturity. He's, he call it shock maturity. That's right, man. That's a hell of a thing, man. <laughs> we have we have two guys. I have two guys on my team that are that are pretty good shooters, and we talked to them about that. That's a great way to explain it. Obviously, Nate was a pro professional coach, so but that's a great way to explain it. Shock maturity, and um, I'm gonna write that down because uh, that's a that's an awesome way. Matter of fact, when I leave here, I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna go into my film session and, and give these guys that term. Because if you have shot maturity, as you call it, you know, yeah, you, know, you know, you can make more shots. The question that I ask is, do you want to shoot or do you want to be a shot maker? Those are two different things. And so I can be a shot maker taking eight shots a night and make six or seven of them opposed to just shooting the ball and make six or seven or 20. I prefer to make the shots that I take. So I have to take the right shots and the ones, because every shot that I I need to find the shots that I can't miss. Okay. The shot that I can't miss is the best shot for everybody. All right. That shot's a layup, hopefully, or it's a shot in the sweet spot that you have. Um, And so, you know, we find that to be the case inside. Um, with our post players and and on the perimeter as well. Every team goes through that. Every team goes through that, and the best teams figure it out um, and, and and are able to 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 play together with a connection that's very difficult to beat. Yeah, because I, I, I just remember him. I was like, he was like, "Are we gonna be shot mature? Are mm-hmm. we gonna be shot immature?" No, no, that's code for somebody else. But right. <laughs> but are we right. gonna be shot no. mature or shot immature? Right. Are right. we going to play to our, he called it, hot zone? We're going right. to play to our cold zones. Right. So right. David Miller was a very tactician about shot maturity, shot immaturity. And I feel like once young men understand that terminology, kind of put it that way, I think it helps them grow as players. I think it helped our young guys in college park, helped our young guys on the bench. He would talk about shot maturity. Right. I think it's a great concept, one that I just picked up. You no <laughs> doubt, and you know what? Last point goes, Sean. I took, what do you see on film from, from Cabral Huff? Um, I know they play some zones, some man. So, uh, we see him on film and how he got his team going year one at Edward Waters, man. Uh, he has a heck of a he has a heck of a team. They're super athletic. They're they're super super aggressive. Uh, tonight's game is going to be. We got to try to keep tonight's game from being from being a track race. We we can't we can't we can't race with them. They're 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 thoroughbreds, and um. <clears throat> that, you know, it's, it's amazing. He's kind of changed styles in the middle of the year, and they're coming 100 miles an hour every possession, all right? And I'm talking about on defense. I'm talking about they're trapping the rebound. They're, they're, they're You're seeing traps and, and pressure every possession. Um, and this, this, this is a oh, – to be honest with you, what they do well is what we do worst. So the team that plays their style the best tonight is going to win. It's an important game. <clears throat> we're, we're vying for – Fourth place, right to be right behind Benedict, Morehouse, and Clark um, on our side of the league. Um, tonight's game will formulate on this first half and um, what that, that what that is. But you no, know, we've got to figure out how to come out and play. They're going to be a super formidable opponent. They're tough. 
uh, athletic, good size. Everybody can shoot. Everybody can run. Everybody can trap. Everybody can rebound. Um, they play with a toughness. Um, Coach Huff done a phenomenal job. And he has somewhat of the plight that I have to rebuild the program in year one. I mean, he's done a, he's done a great job. So looking forward to this challenge. Um, looking forward to it, but not so much. Uh, but um, you know, we'll see what happens tonight, man. We 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 need to protect home court, and um, we'll see them again on Saturday. So um, you know, it's tonight, nice. so it's going to be a very interesting game. No doubt, it's son. Uh, congratulations, man. You know, you got the tenth win, uh, the most t- wins that Allen had in the past few years, and uh, also ten wins for time in Allen's being in D two now. So. I know it's year one for you as you rebuild this thing. Yeah, but congrats on that, man. You're doing a hell of a job, but I know you can stay turned around here the right way, for sure. Thank you very much. It's been a, it's been a task, and uh, we are moving in the right direction. The cheese is moving. <clears throat> and now what we need to do is move with the cheese, right? We need to move with the cheese. And uh, so you know we got eight more eight tough games. I want I don't I don't want to finish 10 and 10 and 18. So and it's very probable it can happen with the teams that we have to play. <clears throat> so when we stand diligent in our preparation, diligent in our practice sessions, um, coaching them hard, pushing them hard, holding them accountable for every single thing. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens going into March. And we have some some particular goals to be able to get a good seed in this tournament and seeing uh, uh, what we can do in this tournament. So I don't think anybody wants to play Allen. I don't think anybody's saying we want Allen in the first round. Um, so that's that's a bonus. And um, we just got to continue to develop, continue to develop and set the, set the, the, the grassroots here in this program so we can move forward after this year. But what's most important after this year is that the, that the young people that we have that are going to move out of the program, go back to their communities and help us get players, go back to their communities and say, I had a great experience at Allen when Coach Walker came in. I wish I had another year. You should go to Allen. Um, that's what that's that's what I need these young guys to do, and then these the, the returners to come back and say we're going to be much better this year than we were last year because they're going to put the work in in the summer. So uh, it's exciting time here, Alan. Man, the cheese is moving. No doubt, my brother. We're going to help him, help him move it to you. The Sean Walker show as well. So for the son, good night, night, man. Thanks for joining us on the game day, man. And you know, we, we know we hope to have a great, great report next Tuesday, man. No question. We look forward to it. All right, brother.